What's up there, guys? Today, we ponder the question, what makes your calves sore while running? We are gonna get into some different aspects, differentiating between soreness and injury, as my wife always likes to say, am I sore, am I injured? I can't always tell. Uh, we'll get into some of the changes that happen around your mechanics, your shoes, and some things you can do to turn the ship around. Coach Nate, by the way, let's get into this video. Hey, look, I get it. Running can beat you up and specifically can beat up your calves, right? They take a whole lot of pounding in this thing. But before we get too far into this video, we wanna separate potentially what you might have going on, right? Whether we're just dealing with some general soreness or we're dealing with some sort of injury. So as a quick check for yourself, you know, is this something that is painful to the touch? Is it a movement where it's forcing you to limp or change your mechanics in some way? Or have you been dealing with this more than say a few days, right? Like it's been lingering for a week or two. That is a situation where you actually might want to go see someone. Um, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one online. Um, you might want to start with some of our fantastic videos we've done partnered with doctors who, who play doctors online and in person. And you can search on our channel for plantar fasciitis, Achilles issues, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. We're talking about general soreness here. If you have a more of an acute issue, you might want to go to those videos first or go uh, get that checked out more specifically. Cool. Now, speaking of muscle soreness, it's good to get a little refresher on exactly what is making your muscle sore in the first place. You know, when we do any type of hard physical work or labor, our muscle fibers break down. There are these little mini tears that are created. And to a certain degree, my body has the ability to adapt to those mini tears. And when we adapt to those mini tears in recovery, we come out the other end stronger. So it's not true that you're necessarily stronger immediately after your workout. It's only true once you've done your workout, you've rested, recovered, your body has had a chance to adapt, and then you know we go again. We get into trouble when we create those micro tears, we don't let ourselves rest and adapt and we immediately go back and immediately go back. And then all of a sudden those small micro tears become bigger, deeper ones that are a little bit harder to bounce back from. So really the number one mistake that I see with new runners when they have any sore body part, but specifically calves, is just too much distance, too much speed, too quickly. You're excited, you're pumped up, you just signed up for something, you're going to run your, with your friends. Maybe they can already run at those distances, you're trying to keep up with them. But we just wanna slow the roll and just be patient with yourself. So make sure every third or fourth week, you are dropping your volume and your intensity down by, you know, at least by 30%, right? I think that's a good, just general watch all. And that gives that body that recovery period every couple weeks to bounce back and get a little bit better. Um, you should be making sure that on the daily and weekly you have good mobility habits because hey, you're a runner now, you're putting your body through that abuse, you want to help it get back with just better soft tissue work on the regular. Just search calf, Achilles, foam rolling. We've got tons of videos on our channel showing you exactly how to do it. And then finally, we want to make sure that um, your mechanics are good. We want to make sure that the, the mechanics are all tied together. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in another clip. Now, there's a few different types of muscle contraction specifically we just want to discuss quick because that helps us understand what really lights our calves up. Now, there's really two different types of uh, contractions. One, there is a, a shortening of the muscle, which is a concentric contraction. If I were to do bicep curl, my big massive arms here, I can go ahead and curl up this way. And then there is the eccentric contraction, which is a controlled lengthening of the muscle, which I lengthen this muscle this way. Um, when I say sprint off the line, I jump up onto a box with my calves, that is going to be that powerful con concentric movement. Where I get into trouble is when I jump off the box, when I lower myself in control. And specifically with running, when it comes to hills, when I start running downhill, controlling myself a little bit more on those descents at that greater speed. So it really is that eccentric movement that we want to be careful of. If you're someone who's been adding a lot more speed work in or a lot more hill work in, just 
feather the brakes a little bit on those downhills when your body's having to control its speed a little bit more on the way down, you're really adding a lot of extra load to that calf. So we wanna make sure that we're balancing it there. And another thing that we can do just to, you know, give ourselves a little insurance is to add a little bit more calf specific strength. So making sure that if I am doing a lot more hills, I'm going both on the uphill and the downhill because the uphills can get you too. I am doing some good single leg uh, foot and ankle stability work and maybe even some calf raises. You know, we've obviously done some videos on that on our channel, so go ahead and search that too. Now a huge contributing factor to calf soreness and potential injury is my mechanics. Now this is an important one for you to assess, especially if you've already done the first two things. You have dialed back your volume and intensity and given yourself a little bit more rest and recovery and you've varied up the roots and the routines and you're still dealing with some issues. A good thing to think about and the way that I think about the body is it's, it's really like a sister of levers and pulleys. Everything is aligned and connected with everything else and every body part has a job. So if I'm dealing with a little fire in one area of the body, chances are it's doing more work than it's supposed to be doing. Now specifically with the calves and the feet, you know, there's, there are multitude reasons why your calves and Achilles could be sore. You know, we could be talking about, well, is it a lower, lower Achilles issue? Is it something higher up in the gastroc? I'm, you know, painting some broad brush strokes for you here. Um, but generally what we could say is, is my foot landing on the ground as it should? And specifically, every time this foot hits the ground, I want to make sure that this calf is working just as hard as it needs to. So it lowers, it lengthens, and then there's a moment where it gets to relax when that heel kisses the ground and then I go up again. So there's this moment where it lowers, lengthens, relax, lowers, lengthens, relax, and then contracts again as we go. If we miss that little heel kiss moment, that calf stays loaded too long for too many miles and that can start to add up. So if you're that person who's running a little bit too much up on your toes or you're fine, your heels aren't on the ground or you've been told that you are a heel striker and you've shifted to running on your toes, stop that, right? We wanna reverse the brakes a little bit and uh, make sure that we uh, are paying attention to our order of operations working from the top down position with our run mechanics. So our, our final piece has to do with your shoes. And you wanna ask yourself, hey, have I made big changes in my shoes recently? Um, and I just wanna talk about what some of those things could be that could light your feet up. Now, one of the factors that I just wanna pay attention to, again, it's multifactorial, there's a lot of things going on with shoes that could contribute to what's going on. But I wanna pay specific attention to my offset between my heel and my forefoot. Now, this is my, my all around training shoe, this is my filming shoe that I use a lot. Pretty low offset. You know, I think it's about four millimeters from the heel to the big toe from a differential. Most typical running shoes are say 12 millimeters. And I, just to give you an example, this is a, a Nike Metcon. Now this itself is not necessarily a uh, running shoe per se, but it specifically has a slightly higher heel platform just for better lifting mechanics, right? And you see lifting shoes, they even have a little bit more here. Traditional running shoes you'll see, will be, I said is at that 12 millimeter. So three times higher than this. So if you buy a shoe and you have a three time drop in your uh, heel to, to big toe, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have, you know, one foot that was elevated a little bit higher, this calf and Achilles was a little bit shortened, it was used to operating in this way, and then all of a sudden you've asked it to lengthen a little bit lower to the ground. So all of a sudden, even your short easy runs are putting that much more stress on your calf and Achilles. So if that's the case, slow your roll again, how can I ease into the shoes that I have? Maybe I wanna move in this direction. Uh, one of the things I could do, let's say I'm you know, working into say an ultra shoe, which is a zero drop shoe, um, maybe start running them only once or twice a week, wearing them around on the daily or just doing short one to three miles, getting a lot of extra mobility work in there and then saving your hard stuff and your long stuff for shoes that your body is more adapted to. And then slowly I can start to ease this way in. If I've totally thrown one shoe out, and taking this new one in, and it's not that similar to this previous one, that can cause me some trouble. Hey, our injury prevention series is specifically purposely built 
for issues like these. We give you, um, you know, a whole reference of incredible head to toe videos just to make you a better runner and really understand why your body might be breaking down the way it is. You can try it for free for a week by clicking this link below for a seven day trial of the training club. Of course, if you like this video, let us know, hit that like button, drop any comments or questions around calves or other sore body parts. Maybe we can do another video on that in the future. And of course, subscribe to our channel guys if you want just workouts, nutrition tips, um, marathon training uh, advice, anything you need to make yourself better on it. We got it going on on our channel. Speaking of, we're gonna keep filming these things, guys, so you keep watching them. So I'll see you in the next one.